Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about triangle theorems. In particular, the triangle sum theorem and the exterior angle theorem. If you have a copy of this worksheet, now is the time to get it out. It's called triangle theorems. If you don't have a copy of this worksheet, that's okay. You can still follow along as I go through these examples and you can learn all about these two theorems. Okay, let's get started. So the problem is we're gonna find the missing angle measures in each of the triangles below. So if we look where the little star is on the side here, I have just what I consider to be a kind of important reminder here. And that is the definition of the triangle sum theorem. So it says that the triangle sum theorem states that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So what I always tell my students is it doesn't matter what triangle you ever meet in your life, the sum of the three angles that make up that triangle are always gonna equal 180 degrees. Doesn't matter if it's a big triangle or a little triangle, a fat triangle, a skinny one, doesn't matter. When you add those three angle measures together, they're always gonna equal 180. Now, the equation on the side here in step one, this is just kind of a formal way that we can use an equation to figure out the missing angle measures. So let's set up an equation for this first example. We've got two angles that we know, the 47 degree angle and the 39 degree angle, and then the third one is the one we need to figure out. So if I write my equation, I'm gonna set it up to show that my 47 degree angle, let's write my equation here, the 47 degree angle plus the 39 degree angle plus whatever that last angle is all together have to equal 180 degrees. And then we're just going to solve this equation. I can add 47 plus 39 together and that's going to give me 86. Bring down that plus x equals 180 degrees. And to solve this one step equation, I'm going to subtract 86 from each side and that's gonna give me x equals 94. So that means that this third angle is going to be 94 degrees. Now, that's somewhat of a formal way to do that problem because we're using the algebraic equation. But another thing, another way we could do it is you could just sort of do it informally. So I'm gonna do that over here on the side. So an informal way to do this would be to take the two angles that you know which are the 47 degree angle and the 39 degree angle, and add these two angles together. It's gonna to give us 86. And then say, every triangle I ever meet in my life has to be 180 degrees. I know two of those angles are 86, so if I subtract those two angles from 180, that third one's gotta be 94, right? So this is just sort of a way you can do it without setting up an algebraic equation. Either way though, the measure of angle X is 94 degrees, and we're finished with that first example. Now the second example is a little more involved because we have some variables. So we're gonna to have to do an extra step, but that's okay, piece of cake. Ready? So we're gonna take our three angle measures. Our first one is X plus five. I'm gonna write that down, X plus five. And my second angle measure is two X minus 21. I'm gonna write that down. 2x minus 21. And this third angle measure over here is just a plain old x. I accidentally wrote a equal sign right there. I don't want to do that. I just want to write a plus sign with an x. And all three of these angles together are going to equal 180 degrees, right? So x plus 5 was my first angle. 2x minus 21 was my second angle. This plain x was my third angle, right? So I'm just taking those three angles adding them together, setting it to equal 180 because it's a triangle and I know that a triangle has to equal 180. From here, we're gonna take what we learned previously about like terms. When we have equations with like terms, we wanna start out by combining them. So I've got an X, got a positive two X right here, another positive X over here, X plus two X plus another X is four X. And then I'm gonna look at my constants. I've got a positive five here and a negative 21. When I combine a positive five and a negative 21, that gives me negative 16, and that equals 180. Then I've got a nice little two-step equation to solve here. We're gonna cancel the constant first. So I'm gonna add 16 on each side. 
And when I do 180 plus 16, that's going to give me 196. And my last step would be to divide by 4. And when I do 196 divided by 4, you can break out a calculator for this one or you can do it mentally, but we're going to get 49 for that either way. Now, we have a little bit of an extra step to do because we have just found out that x equals 49. So that means this plane x, this angle right here, is the one that equals 49 degrees. I'm going to write that down. To figure out these other two, though, I'm going to have to put 49 in place of this x. I'm going to have to use substitution, and that's going to help me figure out what these other angle measures are. So for this angle, instead of this x, I'm going to replace that with a 49, and I have to add 5 to it because that's part of my expression, and 49 plus 5 equals 54. So this angle up here is going to be 54 degrees. And I need to follow that same process with this third angle. I have to do 2 times x, right? I'm going to do it over here on the side. So that's going to be 2 times 49 because we know that value of x is 49. We just figured it out. And then we're going to subtract 21 from that. If I do 2 times 49, that's going to give me 98. And 98 minus 21 is going to give me 77. So this last angle right here is 77 degrees. Okay, so let me repeat that one more time. Once you figure out what x is, if you have an angle in your triangle that's just a plain x, you've got it, right? 49 degrees. But for the other two angles, you're going to have to take that value of x that you just figured out, right? x is 49. So up here, I do 49 plus 5, and I get 54. And then down here, for this angle, I'm going to do 2 times 49, which is going to be 98, and 98 minus 21 is 77. Now, just to be on the safe side, I should add all three of these angles together just to make sure that they equal 180 degrees. If I do 54 plus 49, that gives me 103 so far, and I add another 77 to that, and I get 180. So I know that those answers are all correct. All right, so that is called the triangle angle sum theorem, right? And again, it just means that any triangle that you ever see, those three interior angles, right, the, the angles inside, are always going to total 180 degrees. Okay, let's look at the bottom of your paper now. And the bottom of your worksheet looks like this. So this is all about the exterior angle theorem. Now, this is a whole different theorem. Still, though, it's not difficult. We're going to go through it together. But let me just highlight this for you a little bit. So the exterior angle theorem, okay, I'm just going to highlight it as I read it, states that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. And you're probably like, what does that even mean? Okay, here we go. An exterior angle, right? Think about the exterior of your house. That means outside. So the exterior angle is the angle that is outside the triangle. And then the remote interior angles are the two angles that are across from that exterior angles, right? It says the two angles inside the triangle and on the opposite side of the exterior angle. So I'm just going to show you in an example what I mean by that. So if we look at this first example on the bottom here, okay, this angle X right here is the exterior angle. Right, I'm going to make a little note here that this is the exterior angle right here. And that's because it's not inside the triangle. Right, 68 is inside the triangle, 44 is inside the triangle. This X is not inside the triangle. This one over here is the one that's inside, but they're not asking us to find that one. Right, We're finding the exterior angle. The two remote interior angles are the two angles that are inside the triangle, right, right here, and across from the exterior angle. So not the one right next to it, right? Not the one that makes a straight line to it, but the two that are across from it. So this 68 right here and this 44, these two, I'm going to circle them, are the remote interior angles. Okay, I'm going to make a little note there that they are the remote interior angles. 
And here's what the theorem states. The theorem states that if I take these two remote interior angles and add them together, it's going to give me the measure of this exterior angle here. So let's do that. Let's take the two that we know. So we're going to take the 68 and the 44. We're going to add those two together. And when I do that, I'm going to say 8 plus 4 is 12. I'm going to carry the 1. And 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So these two angles together equal 112 degrees. So what that means is this exterior angle over here, this value of x, is going to be 112 degrees. So whatever the two remote interior angles equal, right, the sum when you add them together, that's going to be the measure of the exterior angle of that triangle. Now if I wanted to find this one right next to it, I could. We learned about supplementary angles already, right? This is a straight line, which is 180. So I could just do 180 minus 112 and figure out what that one is. Another thing I could do is what we just learned at the top portion of this worksheet. I could add these two together and subtract it from 180, right? Because a triangle also equals 180. All right, let's look at the next one. So the next one is a little bit different because the next one, we have our exterior angle right here, which is 136, but we're not trying to figure out what this exterior angle is. They're already telling us it's 136. They're asking us what one of these remote interior angles are. So what I do know is that these two together, when I add them, have to equal 136, right? These two together have to equal 136. So let's write an equation for this. I'm going to say x plus 51 equals 136, right? Because I know from the theorem that whatever these two are added together, it's going to equal the measure of that exterior angle. If I solve my equation, I'm going to subtract 51 from each side. And that's going to give me x equals 85. So that means that this missing angle up here is 85 degrees. Again, if I wanted to figure out what this third angle is, I could use my triangle sum theorem. I know that these three together have to equal 180. So I could say 51 plus 85, and then I could see what that third number would have to be to make a total of 180 degrees, right? So I could say 51 plus 85 is 136, and then 136 plus what number equals 180? Because that triangle has to equal 180. Another way I could think of it as supplementary angles, right? Here's a straight line. So this 136 and this angle next to it have to equal 180. Either way, this missing angle right here is going to be 44 degrees. If we were asked to find that, which we're not. I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I just wanted you to kind of tie it all together with what we had learned before. All right, here's our last example. This little symbol right here, these two um, straight up and down lines here, that means it parallel to. So this means that line A is parallel to line B. So whenever you see two vertical lines like that side by side, that's what it means. It's telling you that this line and this line are parallel to each other. And they want us to find the missing angle measure. So we've got a couple different angle measures going on here, right? We've got X that we need to find. We've got a Y over here that we need to find. We've got a Z that we need to find. So let's take it one step at a time. Let's figure out this X first. Now, if I look right here, I've got myself a triangle, right? So this X right here is actually an exterior angle right here, okay? So I'm going to make a little note that this is an exterior angle because this angle X is not inside the triangle, right? It's next to the triangle. The 78 and the 53 right here are the remote interior angles. They're the two angles inside the triangle that are across from this exterior angle that we need to find. So if I want to find the measure of angle X, I'm going to say 78 plus 53. I'm going to add these guys together. It's going to be 11 right there. 7 plus 5 plus 1 is 13. So this angle right here is going to be 131 degrees. So we found the measure of angle X. So now they want us to find the measure of angle Y. So again, let's think about what we have learned previously um, with our angle measures. Angle Y, if you remember, 
is alternate interior to this 53 degree angle, right? Whenever you have parallel lines, remember that this space in between the parallel lines is considered the interior, and then the space outside the parallel lines would be the exterior. So this 53 degree angle and this Y are alternate interior angles, and that means they are equal to each other. So we're gonna put a 53 right here. And then the last thing we need to figure out is the measure of angle Z. Well, there's a couple ways that we can figure out the measure of angle Z, but I think the easiest way to figure it out would be we've got a straight line here. A straight line is always 180 degrees. Sometimes you have two angles that make the straight line, sometimes you have three angles, which is what we have in this case. We've got a 53 degree angle, a 78 degree angle, and this Z over here. So let's write an equation for that. So we're gonna say 78 plus 53 plus Z has to equal 180 degrees. Now when I add 78 plus 53 together, that's going to give me 131 degrees. So we've got 131 plus Z equals 180. And the last thing we're gonna do is subtract 131 from each side. And that's gonna give us Z equals, when I do my subtraction here, I'm gonna get 49. So the measure of angle Z is 49 degrees. Another thing that we learned about earlier is that if you look at same side interior angles, right, you might remember that. These are interior over here because they're between the parallel lines. The 131 and this angle here are on the same side of this line, which we call a transversal, and that means they are also supplementary. So 131 plus 49 is 180, right? Or we can look at this straight line, which is the one that we just did in the example. We said 78 plus 53 plus whatever this is has to equal 180. All right, so those are two of the theorems that we need to learn about as far as triangles are concerned. So a couple things to take away from this. The first thing is that triangles always equal 180 degrees when you add the three interior angle measures together. And then as far as the exterior angle, just remember an exterior angle is outside the triangle. It's not one of the measures inside the triangle, it's an angle that's like up against the triangle on the outside. And in order to figure out what that measure is, you wanna find the two interior angles, right? The two angles inside the triangle that are across from that exterior angle. And when you add them together, that's gonna to give you the measure. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you need to go back and rewind the video and look at anything again, you know, watch another example over again, um, you can certainly do that. And I hope this was really helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.